You are destined for Trello failure if you make these three mistakes. Stick around to the end, I'm actually gonna give you a fourth bonus one that is really important and really critical to helping make sure you're as successful as you can be with Trello. I've worked with people for over a decade doing all sorts of things in Trello, and I noticed that whenever someone is not successful in Trello, it usually ends up relating to one of these three things. I'm gonna share them with you now. You're gonna use them, you're gonna apply them, and you're gonna be super successful at Trello, and it's gonna work and take care of you, and you're not going to run away from Trello crying. The first deadly sin of Trello, people expect Trello to solve all their problems. A lot of people come to me and they say, I've got a terrible workflow. My people aren't updating their things. Nothing's getting done on time. No one's communicating. I think Trello is gonna solve it. <laughs> Trello is not going to solve any of your workflow problems. Trello is an optimizer. It, it, it takes something and makes it more efficient and helps you actually get something out of it and automate processes that you have in place. It's not going to fix a broken workflow. It's just a tool. So you need to make sure your team understands the processes and workflows that need to happen for your work to actually make sense. And then you can plug it into Trello and it's gonna operationalize it. It's gonna make it efficient. You'll be able to see what you need to work on rather than spending all of your time organizing what to do. The second deadly sin of Trello is that people love to start with the solution and not a problem. Here's what I mean by that. I work with a lot of people who I start to work with them and I go into their boards and they've been so excited by all they can do with Trello. They've added all the power-ups, they've, they've clicked in the automation, they've, they've got some automation that does this, they've got someone being added to a card and they don't know why, and then there's due dates and, and it's like a lot. They've got 20 different boards, they've got 50 lists on the board, they've got labels here, they've got custom fields. And all of these things are amazing and fantastic Trello features. The problem is you don't need all of them. And when you add all of those things in, you're just creating a lot of visual clutter and noise inside of your boards that's gonna distract you and everyone else from trying to get work done. So rather than opening a board and perusing the power up directory and adding all the things or clicking around in automation, start with the problems you're trying to solve. Start by just actually getting your workflows into Trello and then figure out the things that you're manually doing and look for solutions to those things. So for instance, if you're planning to use Trello to organize contacts, you can think about how, okay, well, maybe each list is gonna be a different stage a contact might move through and each contact is gonna be a card and, huh, wait a minute, I have to update all of these fields and I, I can't see some way of like reporting. How would I do that with Trello? I need to be able to see how many people are in each list at any given time and the time they're moving through. There's a power up that does that, it's crumble. So think through it in something like that frame rather than let's add all the power ups and do all the things right now because you're just gonna get shiny object syndrome, trust me, I've been there, I do that, I need to practice what I preach, but this is gonna save you so much time if you just start with the problem, not the solution. The third deadly sin of Trello that I see people making all the time is having boards for everything. It's like Oprah, you get a board, you get a board, this project gets a board, this project gets a board, Board. It's great, it's fun, it's exciting, uh, but it isn't efficient. It's very confusing when you're first starting out. Yes, you will maybe get to a point where you need all of those boards, but when you're first starting out, try to keep it as simple as possible and try to operate in as few boards as possible. This is going to help you be able to maintain that zoomed out bird's eye view of everything going on while still being able to get granular enough into the tasks and the day-to-day -day details. Trello is perfect for doing this. And if you think you need multiple boards, I tend to find people think that when they don't know about filters, so on every board, you can add filters to show you cards that are due this week or cards that are assigned to specific people or cards with specific labels. And you can add as many or as few of these as you want and you can save the URL so you can always come back to this link. And that's gonna give you the exact sort of view that you're looking for. So if you think you need multiple boards, chances are you might just need to use filters and utilize those filtered views for the things you think you need a separate board for. So I recommend trying that out. All right, the fourth bonus deadly sin of Trello is going it alone. I like to think of Trello as a box of Legos. Super cool, super fun, endless possibilities. If you get him and you wanna make like a really cool race car with it, that's super fun. But if you don't get any instructions, it's kind of silly and confusing. What do I do with all of these bricks? Where do they go? How do I make them work? 
that's where you need some assistance. You need a community. You need to surround yourself with other people. There are plenty of Trello enthusiasts just like me. Uh, subscribe to this YouTube channel, but even more than that, come join the Atlassian community. We have a whole section about Trello where people post questions and share ideas and use case and inspiration. And it's a great place to get ideas for how to do things in Trello or ask questions when you're trying to make a specific section of your race car. Uh, we'll show you how to do that. I also recommend you check out my newsletter. I have a weekly newsletter where every week I share tips, tricks, use cases, power-ups, and best practices for doing things in Trello, which is gonna help you immensely on this journey. You don't have to go it alone. There's plenty of free resources out there and ways for you to learn what you're doing, get help when you're stuck, and figure out what you need to be doing. So those are the four deadly sins of Trello. If you're just getting out started out with Trello, uh, Comment in the video description below. I'd love to hear from you. And I'd also be thrilled if you'd subscribe to my channel and my newsletter. Again, every Thursday morning, you'll get more Trello goodness in your inbox. I actually also have a book all about Trello. So if you're brand new to Trello and you're trying to get started and you just want one-stop shop to tell you everything you need to know, check out this book. It's on Amazon. You can get it in your doorstep within two days or you can get it digitally right away. And it's going to help you understand the core components of Trello, the automations you can build with Trello, power ups with Trello, and help you think through solving those problems rather than just willy-nilly adding things to your board like we talked about. So thank you for watching. I'll see you later.